Hello and welcome to Nice Starts and Crafts. I'm Libby and today I'll be showing you some cards um, that I've made by just taking some backgrounds and um, turning them into cards. Um, so here are the cards we will, we will be making today. And I had this just this whole box. This box is from Simon Says Stamp. It's actually really great for holding backgrounds and stuff. But this box was full of um, backgrounds and stuff and they just have been sitting in here because I haven't really found um, any way to use them. Um, and they just, yeah, they've just been sitting in here, so I decided that I would make some cards today. Um, I have sorted them out into some different piles here you see, here you, that you see on camera, um, just to help me kind of get a feel for what I want to use and just to kind of sort them a little bit better because um, they were just kind of all sitting in this box. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then um, here you can see all of these backgrounds. Some of these backgrounds I've made in past videos, which I will link up in the upper right corner if you are interested on how I made some of these. Um, I actually, after this, I went back and organized um, and got rid of any that I didn't like or I knew I wasn't going to use, and I just threw them away. Um, and I just kind of organized them so they better fit um, what I was going to do. So um, a way that you can use backgrounds is by die cutting them. I like to use small die cuts. I have used um, uh, the Spellbinders Mini Blooms and Sprigs. That's a really great one. Um, but today I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Soft Serve Cone for this. And I'm just going to cut um, each of these uh, pieces of the cone out of these different splatter backgrounds that I made. I made them with, I think, like acrylic paint or something. And I just like splattered them on there. Um, and it created these really cool backgrounds and I thought it would work really, really great for, um, for ice cream cones. So I just cut them out of various different colors. Um, and yeah, um, also on that note, um, I took a bunch of my backgrounds. So a lot of like the watercolor backgrounds, I had a bunch of mica stain backgrounds, um, and the extra pieces of the splatter backgrounds and stuff. And I put them just in a little, um, container actually the green one that you see on the screen I just put them in the container and then I have like a little die cutting cart and when I'm die cutting I can die cut extra pieces um just to save me time when I'm die cutting and um so if I want to cut out some die cuts with some other small dies um it's really there and it's easy and there for me to access um if I want to do that so yeah um and I'm just going to place them into this cup when I have cut them out. I got about two of each color out of these panels, um, so that was perfect. Um, and then I also cut the cone out, um, but I cut that of, out of craft cardstock because I didn't have any like brown um, colored um, splatter background, so I just cut them out of um, brown, and um, I don't think you see me making them on screen because this is a pretty self-explanatory um, set to put together, um, but I just cut all the pieces from that craft card sock, as I said, and then I just added a little a bit of ink blending with some Distress Oxide ink um, in, I think it was Ground Espresso, yes, Ground Espresso, um, I just ink blended the little side of it, and then I just layered all those together with some glue, um, so yeah. Oh, here, I did show you me cutting out one of these sets. So um, I cut out um, both of the pieces, and it actually creates three pieces, but um, two of the pieces are in one die, which is nice. Um, next, I thought these needed a little bit more dimension, so I actually brought in some Distress Oxide inks for this. Um, and I'm just actually, I decided to use the sticky mat. This is actually an old Cricut mat that I had, um, and... Um, I thought it would work to make sticky mat mats out of, so I just cut it down. Um, but I just ink blended a little bit of Distress Oxide ink in kind of the um, right hand side and bottom, so kind of the right corner-ish of each of these die cuts. Um, and I just went in with some different colors of Distress Oxide ink to give them a little bit of dimension. In the um, in the big picture, it probably I probably didn't need to ink blend these. Um, it, I think it would have been fine without the ink blending, but um, I decided to ink blend it anyway um, because I thought it would help um, just differentiate each of these layers, but I don't think it did a lot 
um, in the grand scheme of things, so you could probably skip this step. Another thing that I um, kind of messed up on here when I was ink blending is that um, after all these colors got on the sticky mats, they kind of blended into each of the colors I was using, and so it was a little bit off. Um, I don't think you can tell really in the final cards, but um, it definitely um, was there, so I don't suggest or I suggest that you clean off your mat each time if you're going to if you're going to ink blend these. Um, so yeah, um, and I'm just using some domed foam blenders, and I will try to um, explain the um, colors that I'm using. So I used the Kitsch Flamingo for the pink. I used mustard seed for the yellow. I use it. I. I used a little bit of Twisted Citron on the green, but then I switched over to Rustic Wilderness for a little bit more um, of color var variation. I used Salvage Patina for the teal shade, um, and then I tried to use Tumble Glass for the blue, but it didn't work very well, so I actually ended up bringing in Blue Hawaii Reactive Ink from Hero Arts to give a little bit of dimension on there. But you'll see later in the video, I used the Tumble Glass in the background of this card, and it actually worked really nicely with this blue, so you can use that if you want. Then I used Wilted Violet for the um, purple, and um, then I, as I told you, I used some ground espresso for the um, cones to, the, to this ice cream. Um, so then once I had those all ink blended and ready, I just um, glued them together with a little bit of liquid glue. I used Barely Arts glue in a little um, fine tip bottle that I got at like, a big craft store. They're really cheap there and you can eat a lot of them um, and just fill them up with whatever glue you use. Um, so that's nice. And then I'm just going to layer each of these one, each of these ice cream cones. They're, this is a very, very self-explanatory um, uh, die set to put together, um, but there are picture pictures on the Simon Says Stamp um, channel and their website and um, in the packaging as well. So there's a lot of different area places you can look. It basically goes from biggest to smallest. So you have your biggest layer or your most solid layer. And then as they get smaller, um, you will go up from there. And it's very, very simple to put them together. So I just used a little bit of glue for each of these and just line them up um, there. And then I will just add them back into my container so that I can keep them all together. So I'll speed through um, the rest of this. Just finishing them off. Um, again, as I said, I went and organized all my background so it was really, really easy to use. Um, and when I wanted to use them and um, it just made me more inspired and stuff. So, um, yeah, I have a big set that, or a big collection that I can die cut from, which also helped clear my background, um, container and, um, just open it up, um, so that I could use them more, hopefully. So, yeah. So, I will just finish off these last three ice cream cones, and then we will move on. Again, I did not show the putting together of the, um, ice cream cone but it's really self-explanatory and there's um pictures um on like the channel and stuff um you basically just take the solid piece and then oops sorry then you will just layer the top piece of the cone with the top piece of the solid layer and then obviously the crisscross um like little texture for the cone will go on the bottom there as you can see so for one of the cards, I decided I'd make a background with all of the colors here. So I have the cones and also the little ice creams and I've just lined them up and I will add a little bit of glue to them and stick them onto this background, which is just a piece of five and a half by four and a quarter inch white cardstock. Um, and then I will just add them all there. There will be gaps and um, different pieces of this um, that will not be filled. Um, but that's okay because we're gonna cut them off here and then we can use them in other spots. So I'm just gonna cut all of these pieces off and we will be able to use, utilize them on other parts of our, um, of, um, our background um, so that it comes together really nicely. So I will add more yellow cone in the bottom or more yellow ice cream in the bottom and some cones along the sides here to just fill it in. I will then 
trim this background background down with my guillotine trimmer. Um, I think I ended up taking a half of an half of an inch off, so that would be three and a, three and three quarters by um, five inches um, for an A2 size card. And then I just went in and finished off with just a few extra pieces here and there um, where I felt like it still looked um, a little bit um, plain. So yeah. Um, then for the other cards that I'm making, I just ran a bunch of pieces of white cardstock through the optical arches embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. I just spray the cardstock with water because it helps loosen the fibers of the paper so that it doesn't crack. And then I'm going to take over the Distress Oxide inks that I told you earlier, the ones that I used on the um, cones. I just um, swiped the pad over the top of the embossing folder. You don't have to press hard. Um, you just swipe it over and it's really, really simple and it creates this really cool background that coordinates with your um, ice cream cone. Another side note is that you could use a background that you already had in your backgrounds. I just, I didn't have anything that went with what I was doing today, but you could totally use, utilize more of your backgrounds in the backgrounds of these cards. Um, uh, but yeah, I just made some of my own. They were really, really simple. I cut them out of five and then five by three and a quarter inch panels of white cardstock and I just die cut those and then I'm going to be adding some splatters so I have some white acrylic paint as well as some silver here and I will splatter the silver on the cool colors so the green the blue the blue the teal and the purple and then I'm also splattering a little bit of the distress oxide ink um, and I'll splatter a little bit on each of the ice cream cones and also its own panel um, the green one, I only did the panel because I couldn't find the green ice cream cone when I was splattering it. I found it later, but I decided it didn't really need it, so I just moved on. And then I will use gold for my warm colors and also the one where I did all of the colors on it. Um, but I'll do the pink and the um, yellow, and that will just um, finish that off. Um, I also splattered the same um, colors of the Distress Oxide ink and the white um uh, paint on this as well. Um, as you know, if you've seen some of my videos, I use a little bit of thin cardstock and I just layer them up on the back of my panels to give some dimension and it's super, super easy and inexpensive. Um, it's really, really great for this. And then I um, cut this thank you sentiment out and I decided I would use it on this card. Um, so um, yeah, I was just usual, utilizing some old sentiments and stuff that I had. Um, so um, you can also utilize, if you have extra, like, sentiments or different die-cut pieces, you can try to use them with your backgrounds as well um, to just get more use out of it. Then for the second one, I just popped this panel up with the same um, uh, cardstock, and then I popped up the ice cream cone with a little bit of foam tape and um, just added the sentiment. I used the sentiments from the... Spellbinders Mini Everyday Sentiments, and I chose either matte gold or silver foil based on the splatter that I used, and then I just used these foam squares from um, the Dollar Tree to just um, pop up the sentiments just to make them even with the ice cream cone, and um, yeah, I will just add some finishing embellishments. I have some Pink Fresh Studio gold pearls, I think, or matte gold pearls. From um, yeah, Pink Fresh Studio, and um, I put those on the background with all of the ice cream cones. Um, these are the yes, matte gold metallic pearls from Pink Fresh Studio, and then the other for the other cards, I used all the same pearls on them. I used them from Studio Katia. They're like white iridescent pearls. So these ones are. Let me see here the Arctic Breeze Pearls from Studio Katia. And then that will finish off all of these cards. I didn't show the whole, all of them on camera because I thought it would be very repetitive, but I do have pictures or a little video of all of them, which you will see here. So here's the pink one we did on screen, and then I will show you all of the colors I did um, here. To finish it off, I added a, a little bit of some different sentiments, but I needed a lot of like birthday cards, so that's what I have in here mostly. But yeah, that will just finish off our cards for today. And um, yeah, it's a really great, great way to utilize your backgrounds um, and make them really, really beautiful cards. So yeah. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and come back next week for a new video. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today, check the description box below. For more inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing. And for even more inspiration, check out my Instagram and Pinterest accounts at my starts and crafts. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.